Hi, welcome to Seymour Lake Youth Group, and I'm glad that we're here another week. And tonight we're going to learn about a little bit of history with St. Augustine and this lovely book you guys get to take with you because I worked really hard on it for you guys. So, glad you guys are here. So let's start with the cover page. That's him right there. You all see his picture, I'm sure. And I started with a little quote there. Do you want to read that real quick? And then we have this beautiful table of contents page, which is letting us know what's going to be on the very many pages that there are. So, page one, we're learning about who was he. So as you see um, in the front, on the top paragraph there, it says St. Augustine was born 354 CE in Tagaste, South Africa. His father was pagan and his mother was Christian. Growing up, he loved to indulge in inappropriate behavior. He and his friends would steal apples from their neighbors only to feed them to the pigs which he later said that he only liked to do that because it was sinful and he liked the thrill of it. He got to travel a bunch, so he went to school near his home where he frolicked and hung out with his friends and his funds ran out and he went back home. And at 17 he went to Carthage to pursue his studies but also his pleasures yet again. Then he traveled to Rome where he taught but was not paid well. And then he traveled to Milan to teach. After his mother died, he traveled to Hippo. He tried a few religions before being called to Christianity. He dabbed into Manichaeism. Everything is spiritual or matter in that religion. Then he tried Neoplatonism, which focuses on study, discipline, and mystical contemplation of the ineffable one. And he became Christian and gave up teaching and pleasures. He became Bishop of Hippo. See, look, in all those lovely pictures. You guys all like those pictures? Yeah. So... In his life, he decided he wanted to search for truth um, because he, his mother was Christian, as you remember, but his father was another religion. He was, she, he was pagan. And so he was trying to figure out how he could put those together because he found faults within Christianity. Um, so Augustine disliked Christianity because of the crude topics that it involved, like violence and deceit and adultery. It seemed very hypocritical. He also did not understand how there could be evil if God created everything and he was pure and divine. Yet, evil often reigned. Augustine experimented with the theology of other religions. First, he studied Manichaeism. This religion categorized the world between light and darkness. Light is spiritual and good, while darkness is matter and evil. Humans were a mix of the two. This was not wanted as a spiritual element was pure. This meant that an individual must purge the darkness in order to receive salvation. Procreation is evil because it continued the cycle of merging light and darkness. The Bible that contains such dark elements could not come from the light but from the darkness. And so, obviously, that bothered him. That was another reason he was upset with Christianity, there's something not right there he had to come to terms with. So, he's not feeling too good about that religion, so he decides he's going to try the next one, because he is very dear and close to his mother, and when she died, he really, really struggled. Um, and so, he's going to try to find a way to make Christianity work. But first, he goes to a religion, hoping to find that answer through it. Neoplatonism. Augustine, Augustine then went to 
that religion, hoping that it would bring him closer to answering the flaws of Christianity. In this religion, there is an ineffable source of all beings. They were, the people were to bask in the euphoria found when deeply contemplating the ineffable source. In their theology, everything comes from this ineffable source. This idea of one source helped Augustine find some solution to his issues of how good and evil fit with Christianity. He saw that the closer we are to the source or God, the purer we are. However, when we turn away from God, this is what causes evil. Evil is the absence of God. And so he's starting to see how we can make it work out that God created everything and yet there's evil, but yet God is perfect and pure. So Augustine was still concerned with how the word of God could contain so much evil. It still remained that the Bible's heroes often participated in immoral and villainous behavior. The Bishop of Milan helped redeem this part of Christianity to him. He often preached that these stories of evil behavior were more like allegories that contained hidden messages. One had to look for the deeper meaning in these stories, and this was acceptable to him. And so, Augustine decides to convert to Christianity, because, um, you know, God's really good at pursuing us, isn't he? And so, we're now on page three because you guys are all following along, right? He hears a voice. While walking through his garden, he heard a child singing, take up and read. You don't want me to sing that. The first thing he saw to read was biblical scripture, which touched him deeply. Augustine resigned his teaching position and gave up his life of pleasure, praying, give me chastity, incontinence, but not too soon, because he really struggled with giving up all the the things that he was doing not so right, the inappropriate behavior that he thrived and loved so much. And so that's why his prayer ended with, but not too soon. He was then baptized. And so now we get into the inspiration for truth. Are you guys still awake? So anyway, page four, Augustine was touched by the scripture of Romans 13, 13 through 14. It read, not in re reveling and drunkenness, not in lust and wantonness, not in quarrels and rivalries, rather arm yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. Spend no more thought on nature and nature's appetites. This passage brought Augustine to Christian con conversion. It also started his quest to explain his views on sin and grace. Once he was Bishop of Hippo, he wrote works on this topic which influenced Western Christianity. Augustine wanted to correct his old religion because they believed that humans were predetermined. This meant that humans had no freedom. Individuals could not decide their own destiny. Destiny was determined outside of their behavior and religious practices. So now we're on page five. See how that's in the bottom corner? I hope you guys are definitely there, right? So, sin and grace. Free will, is it good or bad? Augustine knew God is our creator and that God is perfectly good, yet we were created and we are not perfectly good. How can he who is pure goodness create creatures who dabble in sin? Augustine explains that God created us to have free will, Free will is good, but allows us to make decisions that are sinful. And the scripture that kind of went with that. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. From Isaiah 59, 2. And the next section down, God's grace saves us from sin. For I do not know the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Romans 7, 19. Augustine believed that before Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, mankind was free from the concept of sin. But we fell through. Now we get stuck making sinful decisions with our free will. 
According to Augustine, even when we understand that we are sinners, we struggle between willing and unwilling to do the right things. This struggle between doing good and temptation for bad is something Paul discussed in Romans, which is the scripture we just read in that picture. But God gives grace, right? He works in us, restoring our free will of misery to a new state, allowing us to both sin and not sin again. Augustine said his grace is irresistible. Grace, then, is what is predestined, not our destiny. So the scripture that went with that is, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Ephesians 4, 7. And so with his works, Augustine wrote the city of God to sketch an allegory of a city whose roots focus on loving God and numerous cities whose roots focus on loving self. All the cities who love themselves eventually fall, but the God-loving city will remain all through time. Augustine also wrote Confessions, which was written as a prayer to paint how God left him, led him through a long and pay, painful pilgrimage. This turned into something beautiful as he developed a deepened faith in Christ from his hardship. And so, the concept of predetermined grace was controversial to other Christian leaders. They felt that with this theology, faith was put in the hands of God and not in human decision. From this, Augustine's works were deeply studied for interpretation. Many liked his views that evilness is the absence of good. However, they disliked his theology on irresistible and predestined grace. And if you want to look at the works that read further on it, there's some bibliography here that has some great stuff. And so I hope you guys learned about grace and sin and St. Augustine. And um, we're going to go play our game now and eat some snacks. Thanks, youth group.